I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. We are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. I tell you what, we got some cool geeky stuff to talk about this week. This is netcast number 205. Is that right? Can that be right? Yes, it is. 205. I just saw it on the blog over there. <laughs> I saw 204 was last week, so that would make this week 205. Ha ha, I know these things. Anyway, the blog, of course, that I'm speaking of is drbill.cc, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, as it says right there. And I encourage you to go there. By the way, C-C stands for Computer Curmudgeon. Yes, the beard is shorter than it has been. But uh, that's because of a rogue hairstylist, or whatever you call them. You don't call them barbers when you go to a place like Great Clips. I guess they're hairstylists there. Anyway, the point is, she said, I said, I want my beard trimmed. She said, okay. <laughs> and she put the little clippy thing on and went, and there was hair everywhere. It looked like you could build a small animal from all that hair. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> it will grow back. I keep telling myself that. It will grow back. I like having a beard that I can actually stroke. This is like the Invisi beard. <laughs> I know you see it, but I can't really like feel it. It's just not it's like it's not there. <sighs> Calm. Happy thoughts. Yes. Every so often I have to take a calm break. Just because. Otherwise I get stressed. Ah. Okay. <laughs> to the blog. By the way, I'm back over here to the screen. There. There. T-H-A-R there. Oh well. I lived in Texas for two years, you know, I, around Dallas, so I got the R. Howdy, partner. Anyway. A real Hobbit house. How cool is that? You can see the picture on the blog, the aforementioned drbill.cc, if you go there and look, a real Hobbit house. Now, this, as I say in the write-up here, although it's a very short write-up, it is true geekery. This guy wrote up plans. I mean, you can actually see them. If you click on the link that I have there, you can go to the website and you can see his hand-drawn plans for a hobbit house. And then he proceeded not just to draw it, but to go ahead and build it. It's a lot of work, particularly using real, you know, na real natural materials, as opposed to artificial natural materials. I don't know. Anyway, he built it and it looks awesome. I mean, these pictures look like something out of the movie, but he actually has it where he can live in it. And I mean, I don't know if he lives, lives in it like every day, but he can go there and be geeky. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? The geekiness. So I put that under geek culture because I felt that was splendid and worthwhile to quote hitchhikers, which I do occasionally anyway. Seagate announces a four gig external drive. I am so down with this because the more disk space you can get, the better. Know what I'm saying? You can give me all the disk space, you can throw at me. Actually, don't throw it because that might damage the disks. Just saying. But you can certainly give the disks to me and I would take them and I would appreciate it. Because these days, you just don't have enough storage. I mean, we've got, 
we've got like MP4s and M4Vs and other kinds of video files that take up a tremendous amount of space. I mean, those are compressed. If they weren't compressed, you can imagine they'd take up even more space. And of course, all the music files. I mean, the, my son, the Game Master, he's got so many files. He's got like a terabyte drive just for his audio. And then he kind of swaps off, you know, what he wants to play on his Droid X phone. Mostly the Megas. Those are the guys that do all the Mega Man songs, which I have going through my head all the time. I mean, I woke up this morning. First thing I heard this morning was, you know, I gave you power. I gave you your heart. I built you, you know, the message of Dr. Light song. Duh. Gets, don't worry, it just floats in your brain. They're very catchy songs, actually. And the musicality, if that's a word, the music is very good. I particularly like the guitar riffs. You know? Ha! Ah. Anyway, <clears throat> how did we get all... Oh, well, I get, okay, I kind of remember how we got there. Never mind. 4 gig drive! 4 gig, now this is a 4 gig external drive. Okay, Seagate announced the world's first 4 terabyte external. Did I say gig? <gasps> I'm shocked. That's my shocked face. I have this story with the headline, Seagate announces a 4 gig external drive. <laughs> it's a 4 terabyte external drive. If they announced a 4 gig external drive, everybody go, so? <laughs> terabyte. You know, that's so embarrassing. I think I'll just fix it right now <laughs> rather than go another moment with such wrongness. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, I see what I did. You gotta have the little slashy thing <laughs> after the address before you type the part that I was typing. It makes sense to me. Don't worry about it. Okay, last pass is filling in the password. I'm now logging in. By the way, you know, LastPass was one of our Geek Software of the Weeks. Dude, I so like that software. It is so cool, and it works so well. It's just awesome. Okay. Man, this is so embarrassing. Four terabyte. Let's just make it capital TB. Terabyte. And I'm going to have to even change the permalink. Otherwise, people will go, what in the world is he talking about? Okay. It's fixed. <laughs> oh, that's so embarrassing. You know what it is, don't you? It's the computer curmudgeonly age of the doctor that's making it to where I remember, I remember back when I bought a four megabyte. No, it was a five megabyte full height hard drive for $850. Yes, I remember that. That was, that was five megabytes. Five gigabytes is small now. You know, you don't even build a system unless you have like a 40 gig drive on it for the system drive. And then you have another data drive, it's probably a terabyte. Well, this is a four terabyte external drive. Boy, talk about being embarrassed. Let's move on to something happier. Yesterday, as I wrote this, so it would have been September the 8th of 1966, was the first episode aired of Star Trek. Dude! So that makes it the 45th anniversary. I'm not going to get into an argument on anniversaries. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. All right, anyway... Uh, I saw that first episode live as it aired. Yes. And I watched every episode after that in every incarnation of Star Trek. And I love the Star Trek. Yes. As I say here, may the great bird of the galaxy be with us for a long, long time. There's a whole story about the great bird of the galaxy. On the set of Star Trek, they called Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, the great bird of the galaxy. 
Now, many, many, many years later, in a series of Star Trek novels called Final Frontier, David Mack wrote a story. I'm getting real trivia oriented here, okay? This is real Trekker, trekker stuff, okay? He wrote a story about there being a real great bird of the galaxy at the heart of the planet Thalon, which then, when the great bird erupted out of that planet, it destroyed the planet. I think it was Thalon. Maybe it wasn't. But anyway, it was maybe one of the Thalonian Empire planets, because I think Thalon is still around. Anyway, you don't care. I do, because I'm a trucker, but you don't care. So. But they had a real great bird of the galaxy. Which is odd. But you got to remember, this is the same guy that wrote a story about the X-Men and the Next Generation crew. Okay? Just, just saying. Which got really interesting because Patrick Stewart played Picard and he also played Professor Xavier. So that was kind of funny because they kept making comments like, You look familiar. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Just weird. Okay. Here's an item that I cross-posted from another blog that I do. <laughs> you say, Dr. Bell, how many blogs do you do? I, I don't even want to talk about it. It's just too many. But anyway, I do a new blog called The Handheld Hack. It's actually called Handheld Hack, as it says there on the screen. And... <laughs> I posted this to that blog, but then I thought, well, I'll cross post over to the Dr. Bill blog because it is of interest to everyone, whether it's the people who do handheld hacking or people who are generally geeky like the people that watch the Dr. Bill show. So this is called Git Jar. Odd name. Anyway, Git Jar is an alternative to the Google App Store? Question mark. Well, maybe not an alternative, but at least another source. This is what I say about it. Uh, and a lot of the paid apps you might have been looking for are free there. Now, that's the cool thing. They're free apps at this gitjar.com. Operating systems include Android, Blackberry, Java, Simeon, and Mobile Web. So all of those phones can get stuff from Gitjar. Now, here's what they say about themselves. Gitjar is the world's largest free app store with over 2 billion downloads to date. The company distributes more than 150,000 mobile applications across a variety of operating systems, including the aforementioned Android, Blackberry, Java, 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 Symbian. See, Symbian put me in the frame of mind to say Java, and, but it's not. And mobile web. In 2010, Gitjar was named a Technology Pioneer Award winner by the World Economic Forum. Okay. And listed by Time Magazine as one of the 10 companies that will change your life. Okay. Gitjar is headquartered in Silicon Valley with offices in the UK and Lithuania. For more information, please visit www.gitjar.com, as it says there on the screen. And follow us at at Gitjar which is their Twitter address. Twitter! Reminds me of the geek culture song that I did many years ago that I posted called, You're no one if you're not on Twitter. It's just such a strange song. Anyway, you can get with my Twittering here at Dr. Bill Bailey Twitter account. Just thought I'd mention that since we're all talking Twitter. Talking Twitter. Oh! Yes, it's time for the Geek Stop for the Week. I don't know what it is with that drum roll. Next day, hit me upside the back of the head. Tux, do you know about that? Anyway, never mind. Sometimes I wonder if it's Tux. Anyway. I hear voices. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, Geek Software of the Week is Connectify. Connectify, here's what I say about that. Have you ever wanted to turn an old laptop into a Wi-Fi hotspot to share Wi-Fi goodness with a group? Is that what you want to do? Well, now it's simple. I see something else I need to do. I wanted to bold a word and I didn't. So I will 
bold it now. So you probably go to the blog after I make all these little edits and you go, what did he change? What's going on? Don't worry about it. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to some of these things. I want it to be just so, just, just the way I want it. So, there, that's better. Okay. <laughs> now it's simple. <laughs> you go to connectify.me. Connectify.me. Get it? Connect me. Okay. Anyway, this is this allows you to set up a mobile Wi-Fi hotspot using a machine of various kinds. You can use uh, you can use a Mac. You can use a Windows 7 PC. I mean that's pretty cool. And you can set it up so that you can share your Wi-Fi with those who need Wi-Fi occasion. Yes. <laughs> Okay, now, here's what I want to do now. I want to mention to you our sponsor, and we have an awesome sponsor in Citrix Systems. Citrix is just really cool. I do Citrixy stuff at work. I'm the Citrix administrator there, and so I know Citrix very, very well. And so I encourage you to Take advantage of this offer that we have for uh, GoToAssist Express. As the banner says, GoToAssist Express is awesome. And as a geek, and I'm sure most of you watching this are geeks, you probably have people bugging you all the time, please help me with my PC. Well, GoToAssist Express allows you to do just that. And it's an awesome way to do it. And it's so simple for them to connect you up to their system, even a non-geek, and let's be honest, that's probably what they are, can connect you to their system for you to help them. Yes. So, use this special bit.ly URL right here. Yes. Click on that. Now, I know you can't click on your screen to do it right now, but you can write it down and then put it in the URL string and then do that. Or you can go to the blog, drbill.cc, and you can click on the link there, or you can get it out of the show notes. There's just so many ways to do it. But if you do that, you'll not only get the goodness of having a free 30-day trial of go to assist, but you'll also be helping the Dr. Bill show. How cool is that? Awesome. Anyway, back to the blog, shall we? Last item that I want to mention this week is a Netflix controversy. <laughs> controversy. I know how to pronounce it. But I like to pronounce words incorrectly to see if you're paying attention. I like doing that, sticking my finger in your face. <laughs> It's just one of those fun things to do. Anyway, it seems that earlier this week a rumor was started that Netflix was going to stop people from streaming two programs at once from their own personal account. There was groaning and gnashing of teeth. But it turns out, according to Netflix, it was just a bug. It wasn't a new policy. People are a little nervous about Netflix, you know, since they did what they did with their pricing. But, hey... Another story. So, there is no capping of streaming programs per account according to Netflix. Everyone can relax now. Breathe, people, breathe. That's what I was saying a while ago about the, ah, the calming time. We'll all just be calm. Yes. Ah, isn't that better? Okay, well, that's pretty much what I had for you this week. Hope you enjoyed it. I really do trust you enjoyed it because otherwise you'd quit tur tuning in. Turning in. You'd quit tuning in. And you'd be like Scott at the beginning of the program that's going, where is it? Where is it? It's in here somewhere. Anyway. Until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.